Hey everyone, Karnak, Star Wars Armada Explained. It's your buddy, it's your pal. Thank you for joining me. We're going to be looking at the Imperial Squadron, the TIE Defender. I am a big fan of the TIE Defender, but you don't see it a whole lot in competitive play. Why is that? I'll touch on that a bit. Let's dive right in. So the TIE Defender, you know, in a standard 400 point game, you can bring up to 134 points of squadrons. The TIE Defender, if you look at the bottom right hand corner, you'll see its point cost 16 points. Uh, opposite of that is its icon. The TIE Defender is a, what we call a generic squadron. It means you can bring as many of them as, as you'd like to within your point cost allotment. Their stats, going from left to right, is they can move within distance 5, so they're a very fast squadron. Uh, they have 6 holes, so pretty, pretty beefy on the hole points there, pretty durable. They have 2 blue anti-squadron and 2 black anti-squadron die for a total of 4 die, 2 and 2. And their anti-ship armament is a single blue die. The only keyword they have is the bomber keyword. And the bomber keyword allows them to be able to deal damage on a critical symbol and also allows them to resolve critical effects. So typically for squadrons, if they don't have the bomber keyword, what this means is when they roll their anti-ship die, uh, only the hit symbols will actually deal damage. No other symbols will deal damage, not, not including the critical effect. Um, with the TIE Defender, what this means is that, again, on a blue die, you have eight sides. There's four hit sides, two critical sides, and two accuracy sides. So, again, a normal squadron with just a single blue die, it's a 50-50 chance whether you deal damage or not. With a TIE Defender, with those two critical symbols now becoming damage, you have a 75% chance of rolling damage with your blue die, um, and a 25% chance of, of rolling an accuracy. So... You know, bomb. They they are one of the best multi-role squadrons in Armada. But again, the touchback on why don't you see them so often? It's kind of their point cost, and their anti-ship armament is a tad lacking. Um, so again, for 16 points, yes, they may be really great at killing you know gener other generic squadrons because you know you can fly up, you can toss the two blue, toss the two black. You know, I just did three damage compared to if I'd rolled four blue die. You know, uh, there's that there's that risk of well, I still rolled a really good there, but you know, you you've got other chances of potentially not having great damage output. And again, that kind of ties back into why you don't see them is like, well, why spend 16 points for a tie defender when I can spend 11 points on a tie interceptor that also has reroll. And it's cheaper and has counter. Um, it still is commanded just like a TIE uh, Defender is. And yeah, sure, the TIE Interceptor's um, anti-ship armament being able to blow up ships is not as great. But a 50% chance of damage compared to still 75% chance of damage. You know, I'm going to go with the 50% just because that way I can bring more interceptors, clear the skies of enemy squadrons. And that way, if I did bring some other types of dedicated bombers, they can then go in and, and do what they need to do. You know, so that's kind of the drawback of the Defender is it's really good at, you know, it's really fast. It's it's tough. It can it can nuke enemy squadrons. It can take a hit. Um, but then when you do lose it, that's 16 points compared to an Interceptor, which usually you can get more value. It's essentially, it's just, it comes down to values. And it's not that you can't build lists with TIE Defenders and have them do good. Um, they're, they're fantastic in larger point games, like Sector Fleets or Rebellion in the Rim, I found. It's just in the competitive 400-point sense is that you need to have a plan of what you're doing of everything you have on the board. And if I can take two TIE Fighters and they can do just as much, if not more damage than a TIE Defender... Why bring a TIE Defender when I get the extra deployment from the two TIE Fighters and the two TIE Fighters are two different attacks that potentially can dish out more damage than the TIE Defender? So that's kind of the drawback is that it's point cost. I think it's just it was priced just maybe a point or two too high. Or even if it had been priced 16 points, maybe the anti-ship die had been a black die instead of a blue die. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a developer. I couldn't tell you. I'm just throwing out ideas. But like I said, they're they're fun and they're great in, in when you've got more points to play with or like in Rebellion of the Rim where you start with those point costs and you really want like a really beefy kind of squadron. Okay, I've touched enough on that. Let's talk about my boy Merrick Steele. Merrick Steele, going to come out and say it, it's, a, it's maybe not a commonly accepted agreement, but it is a 
is a, an accepted agreement that he is one of the best, in my personal opinion, is the best squadron in Armada, hands down. He's 21 points. Again, he's unique with the dot or bullet point there in his name. Can we bring one of them? He has all the same stats as a TIE Defender, except he has two blue die in his anti-ship armament. Again, he's got Bomber. He's got double braces. Uh, he also has Grit, and how Grit works is that if he's only engaged by one enemy squadron, uh, he can say, nope, I'm just going to bounce out of here. You can't stop this. But if he's engaged by two enemy squadrons, then he can't move away from them. Um, or if he's engaged by one squadron that is not heavy and is engaged by a squadron with heavy that does contribute to squadron total, he can't move away. But pretty much, like, if you want to stop him from doing what he does best, which is bomb ships, and not move around, you got to toss two squadrons at him. Okay, so now he's tying up two of your squadrons, and now the rest of his squadrons can still focus on things. Because, again, six hull points, double brace, he can take a punch or two before needing to be rescued. Um, his card ability, though, is one of the best for squadrons in the game, because it's while attacking, you may change one die to a face with a critical icon. And this works for attacking squadrons and attacking ships. So an anti-squadron attack, let's roll the two blue, two black here, and we'll say that this uh, black die had been a blank. And so to roll like that, you've been like, oh man, only dealing one damage. Ah, oh, but I can use Merrick Steel's ability. Set this to a side for critical face, which even though there's a hit symbol on there, there's technically a critical symbol on there too. You can change it to a side of a hit crit, and hey, now you're dealing two damage. Um... So, you know, you're always guaranteed at least one damage with Merrick Steel. So it's really nice when you see those two blue dice come up as hits, and you're like, that's fantastic, because I know that even if I roll double blanks, I can turn one of the damage, I'm getting three damage. Um, it's great. Uh, Merrick Steel is, is excellent in anti-fighter, uh, but he's best at just nuking and killing capital ships. Because again, he can roll up, roll the two die, and oh, accuracy. Well, I don't, I don't care about that. Set that to a, set that to a critical symbol. Now I'm dealing damage. Poor little hammerhead here is like, even though he can redirect, again, he's only got the one shield on each side. He's still taking one in the front. Um, you know, you just can pound away. And where he is best comboed with is with Colonel Jendon, because Colonel Jendon can pass his attack to other squadrons. So you, you almost always see these two squadrons together because they just work so well in tandem. You have st Steel fly up, deal two damage. Flies up again, deals two more damage. That's four damage from just those two squadrons. That's as much as, you know, most small ships uh, in some cases. So, you know, and they're self-contained and self-sufficient because Relay can always get to Merrick Steel wherever you, you need to get them. And, yeah. And one thing I do want to point out is that not some players uh, kind of connect the dots on this, is if you are bringing Admiral Salone, uh, remember Admiral Salone's, one of the abilities that Admiral Salone has is that if a squadron rolls a critical symbol, they can re-roll that die. So if you're trying to do something like strip a defensive token off of something, like for example, large ship, like say at the top of turn two, I can fly Merrick Steel up and say I, that was my initial roll. It's like, well, I want an accuracy symbol because I want to try to get rid of a brace on a ship. You can re-roll that critical symbol and like, ah, you know what? I didn't get it. Well, I can still set it back to damage. No problem. Or in a case where if you did, uh, you know, roll double hits, if you did roll double hits and you're like, well, I, I want to try to fish for that accuracy, you set that to a crit with Merrick Steel's ability and then re-roll it with Salone, you know? So he's just, he's, I mean, if you, if you see Salone, Merrick Steel and Colonel Jundin not far behind. Um, and I've also seen a case where you just kind of tag team them with a Gazanti, because a Gazanti can just command both of them. And I've seen players just use this as like a as a flanker, to where you know the Gazanti is maybe it's shooting a blue die, and you know essentially it's five damage just with these with the, these guys right there. So, but anyway, that's Tide Defenders. There's nothing else crazy going on. There's no other unique or interesting card combinations. Very straightforward. Appreciate you guys watching the video, and hey, I'll catch you all next time.